السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله ويس الله to make this Ramadan a blessing Ramadan the best Ramadan ويس الله to restore our life and to save us from this calamity ويس الله to accept our deed ويس الله to give to uh, wish to uh, to make this Ramadan Ramadan Mubarak inshallah so our program for this Ramadan is going to be a tafsir of one ayah from every juz throughout the whole Ramadan. So we're going to try to cover the 30, the 30 juz from Quran. Uh, the approach that I'm going to take is for, before I dive into the ayah, I'm going to give you a high level view of the surah, where the ayah came from. As we know, the ayahs or the verses in Quran are all have such amazing cohesiveness and they all tie and connected to the main theme of the Sora. So we're going to discuss the overview of the Sora, the main theme, what we call maqsad in, in, uh, in the language that we use in tafsir is maqsad, which means the main theme, the main goal, the main message, if you will. And then um, if there are any fada'il or benefit of the Sora, I'll share that with you because as you know, there's a lot of hadiths out there that, that, that fabricated uh, about the benefit of the surah. So I'm only going to share with you what's been authentic according to the scholar, which is sahih. And I will not go into the fabricated hadiths. I will never do that. So, um, so the first thing I want to share with you is Surah Al-Baqarah, when it comes to its benefit, before I dive into the main theme of the surah, Rasulullah sallam fi hadith sahih muslim Samiat wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is a hadith uh, Abi Umama al-Bahili He's narrated that he said Samiat wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Yaqool Iqra'u al-Qur'an fa'innahu yati yawm al-qiyama shafi'an li ashabih Iqra'u al-Zahrawain al-Baqara wa surat al-Imran Fa'innahuma ta'tiyan yawm al-qiyama ka'annahuma ghamamatan أو كأنهما غيايتان أو كأنهما فرقان من طير صواف تحاجان عن أصحابهما يقرأ سورة البقرة فإن أخذها بركة وتركها حسرة ولا تستطيعها البطلة In a rough translation, the Prophet ﷺ narrated in Sahih Muslim This is the hadith came from Sahih Muslim Where he said that Recite the Quran on the day, uh, on the day of resur resur uh, resurrection, it will come as intercessor. The Quran will come as intercessor for those who recite it. May Allah make us among them. Recite the two bright one, that means Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. For the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades, two clouds or two shades, or two flocks of birds in ranks. They, they will plead for those who recite them. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah for it. It takes course for it in a blessing. And so and, and so it has either it can either be a blessing for those who recite it, or if you gave that up, it will be a cause of a grief and a loss. And the magician cannot confront it. So it's protection from the magic and sihr. So that's from the benefit of Surah Al-Baqarah. So now let's dive into the, the main theme or maqsad of the Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah is Surah Madaniya. So it came after the migration of the Prophet And why do we care whether it's Madaniya or not? Because there are two kinds of, 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 uh, of Surah. Of so, uh, either the Makki or Madani. Makki means the, 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 the Surah that, the sur, or the Surah that came that were revealed prior to the migration of the Prophet ﷺ. And then there is another section of the Quran that was revealed after the migration of the Prophet ﷺ. So the one that was revealed before the migration, we call it Mecca Surah. The one that came after Madani, or after the migration, is called Madani. Why do we care? Because the two uh, styles of Quran, Mecca and Madani, have a different style, different message. 
So the Mecca typically focus on aqidah, on the faith. So you see a lot of discussion about Tawheed. You see discussion about Yom Al-Qiyamah, the Hereafter, Jannah, and nar and so forth. Where in in Mecca Quran, it has a it, it, it has a lot of content on ahkam like salat, psalm, uh, zakat, riba, and so forth. Like so, uh, like the one we have now, so the uh, al-Baqar. It also has discussion about the hypocrites, Banu Israel, and so forth. So Surah Al-Baqarah, it has that style. It's it's a, it's medani. So when it comes to main theme, and I, I know I'm going to try to make this video very short, and because uh, I'm committed to ten, no more than fifteen minutes for every video. So this particular Surah Baqarah. It started with discussing the three kind of people, believer, disbeliever, and hypocrite, as I'm showing in the graph. Then came Adam السلام, and you know the story of Adam and Shaitan and so forth. And then, uh, and subhanAllah, I just want to highlight something. Adam السلام, he made the stighfar, and that was the first time a human being ever made. So the first dua a human being ever made is stighfar. So remember to do stighfar. Stighfar, stighfar is the essential. Then after that came Ben Israel, and Ben Israel, the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala test him, uh, and there was a lot of discussion about Ben Israel in Surah Al-Baqarah. This testing, the ayah that I'm going to discuss, it's connected to the testing of Surah of Ben Israel, and this is why I want to sh share with you the beauty of, of Quran. So the ayah that I'm going to discuss, it's connected to the testing of Ben Israel. So that's how we're trying to do through Ramadan. It's connecting the ayah. To, the, to something to the surah. In this case, this surah, it's about, like I'm going to explain it in a minute, it's about sikhlef, which is taking charge of this world. What does that mean? Taking charge of the world means who's going to be carrying the message of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrated in this surah Baqarah beautifully how he started with Ben Israel. He asked him to carry the message, but they failed. They really failed. And then came then came the Prophet uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and he's going to be the our first Muslim. He's going to build the Kaaba, and then after that, the Prophet alayhi salam is going to inherit the Kaaba. And there's a lot of discussion about the direction of where we pray. That was in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then came Muhammad and his Ummah. His Ummah came. So now we are going to be the the nation. In charge of the of the earth of carrying this message message of Islam, Subhanallah. It's so beautiful how it, it, it's progressive. This whole story and how the message is being passed on from Ben Israel to us. And now we are the chosen nation, and because we are the chosen nation, Allah Subhanallah described a whole bunch of ahkam being as organic because the surah Madani it has to have that level of content. Of, of ahkams, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, so because you are now, you've been chosen as a nation, it's time for you to learn the rules, the rules of Sharia. So he provides us so much detail about Quran, Salah, you know, Siyam, Riba, and so forth, in Surah Al-Baqarah. So the, the main theme of this, like I said, is Tikhlaf, is who's going to take charge of uh, carrying the message. Ben Israel, of course, one of the key uh, key uh, character in this uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, they, they, they failed that test, and this is what the ayah is going to be about. So, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ قالوا <laughs> beautiful uh, recitation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, ayah 67, which is going to be our main topic of today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرْكُمْ إِنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُونَ هُزُوَةً قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين. So a rough translation and recall when Moses, may Allah be pleased with him, said to his people, عليه السلام, Indeed, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. 
They said, do you take us in ridicule? That means you make a fun of us. He said, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. So <clears throat> this is one of the tests of Ben Israel, this ayah, which is connected to the topic I just discussed, which is the main theme of the surah. So Ben Israel, just as a background, there was an incident that took place in Ben Israel where a person was murdered. So Ben Israel came to Musa السلام, and said, can you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us who killed this person? But Musa came later and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to slaughter a cow. They're like, what? Are you making fun of us? We ask you to go find out who committed the crime. You're telling us to slaughter the cow. And so, subhanAllah, this is the... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell them why they slaughtered the cow. So this is ayah 67. It wasn't until Ayah 73 later where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained why he asked him to do what to, to, to uh, slaughter the cow. In the ayah it says, فَقُلْنَا اضْرِبُوا بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِنُونَ We said strike him with part of it. Thus Allah brings the death to life and he will show you his sign that you may understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to slaughter the cow, take a piece of it, strike that person who was killed, and he's going to come alive and tell him who killed him. He did not explain to them that. He didn't tell them that when he asked them to slaughter the cow. He's testing their iman. He's, he's testing their submission. And remember, I talked to you about Surah Al-Baqarah. It's about submission. Submission and carry the message. Don't ask. Sami'na wa athana. That's what they're supposed to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them to do slaughter the cow. They said they should have sami'na wa athana. But they didn't. You're going to hear the, the expression sami'na wa asayna. It's listed actually in Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, we all recite those two ayahs. And I will have another video on those. We are Allah sami'na wa ata'na because we are the supposed to be sami'na wa ata'na, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But subhanAllah, when, when Musa tests them and they, they are like, are you making fun of us? They refuse to follow. They were looking for reason. And sometimes we don't understand the reason, ya khwani. We don't understand the reason why Allah asked us to do something. Why is duhr for rak'ah? Why do we make wudu? Why are we fast? And oftentimes we come up with some illa, some, some reason we're trying to interpret you know, the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that is not even correct. You ask people why you pray. Well, praise is good physical workout. That's not, that's not right. And, you, and if someone asks you to fast, well, I'm fasting because it's a good, healthy, uh, good physical thing for the body. That's wrong. And if someone asks you, why you make a wado? You don't say, I make a wado because it clean the, it washes the body. That is not true. If that's the case, you, we, do, we make a wado because to wash our body from the dirt, then why is a tayammum is there? Is tayammum? Tayammum is supposed to substitute wado when you can, when you don't have the ability to reach, when you don't have water during salat. See, this is the thing. And, and, and if that's the case, then why we make, why we wipe our socks on the top of our feet, not in the bottom? Is that, does that make sense? There are things we don't understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us something, or the Prophet is telling us something, we just have to say, yes, sami'na wa athana. So this is the message from this ayah, sami'na wa athana. You don't ask, you may never know the wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did and asked us to do what, what he asked us to do. And why did Rasulullah ask to do what he asked to do? So the message from this ayah, my brothers and sisters, there are two points I want to close this message. The first one is obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't question why he said what he said, why he asked to do what he asked us to do. And the same thing for any ihkan, whether it's Quran or Sunnah. No question. We are the ummah, sami'na wa ata'na. That's the first message. The second point is you don't make a fun of any order command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Prophet. 
if whether it's command, whether it's an order to stay away from something, we don't question it. We just follow. And then sometimes, you know, sometimes a knuckle, it might be contradicting the aql, meaning there are things sometimes our mind doesn't understand it. Right? So so knuckle comes first. That means whatever it's been said by the Prophet and Quran takes place always. And that's the, the aqidah. This ayah really discussed the aqidah concept of Iman and believing in Allah and just following what He's asking us to do. So those are the two points that I want to share with you. As Allah to make to, to uh, help us understand what has been said, as Allah to uh, make to give us a fully understanding of Quran and to make him a nur for us and a source of guidance. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu alik. Jazakumullah khair.